Taiga is one of the world's best roller coasters, and it's located in a park that is fairly obscure. To ride this, you're going to have to go all the way to Helsinki, Finland to Linnanmaki. It's their signature roller coaster there. Actually, a really wonderful park. I highly recommend it. It's an Entman multi-launch coaster. Sends you through four inversions. And for those of you stateside, the ride I would best compare Taiga to is definitely Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. This actually opened before Velocicoaster. It was in 2019. And while it doesn't have the theming that Velocicoaster has, there are plenty of aspects of this ride that are definitely better. So in this review, I'm going to be talking about everything that you can expect with this ride. We'll walk through each of the different elements and talk about why this ride works so well. But trust me, by the end of this video, you're going to want to make a trip out to Finland to ride this thing. And it is absolutely worth it. So first, one of the things that I love about Taiga is how it just works so well in this skyline. The track is painted blue so it can blend in with the sky. Because it's Linamaki's biggest roller coaster, they didn't want it to be too overly distracting. I know SeaWorld San Diego does the same thing. It's actually the exact same color scheme as a ride that's located directly underneath the coaster. I think I heard somewhere that this wasn't the original plan for Taiga's colors, but it's what we ended up with, and it's beautiful so I'm fine with it. The entrance to the ride is located towards the front of the park, which is something that I initially did not realize. The entire park is located on a hill and Taiga hugs one side of it. But it's really like the first roller coaster you get to when you arrive. In the Finnish language, Taiga is a cold and rough forest. So what they decided to do here was theme the roller coaster to two different eagles that are flying around a Taiga forest. And each of those eagles are the two different trains. And they have their names. They are Felix and Fiona. It's not a well-themed queue at all. It's actually fairly plain, decently long too, which stinks because for this roller coaster, you have to go back around every single time you want to ride it. There are no rerides, even if the row in front of you is empty. So get used to going through this queue. It's down several steps, back up. But once you get to the station, it is very nice looking. You'll hear that Taiga has its own I'm a score soundtrack. It's very adventurous sounding. I feel like I'm on a quest through the mountains when I hear it. And of course, it's complete with lots of bird screeching sound effects. I will say, be aware that Taiga's line drastically varies depending on when you go to Linamaki. On one of the days we were there, we went in the morning and it was just a walk-on. At one point, we were the only ones in the station and it was amazing. But then by later in the day, it was absolutely slammed. One of the things you can get for Linamaki is a skip the line that works just for that ride. It takes you to the other side of the station and then you board before anyone else. So you can also pick your row. So it's something to keep in mind if you go to Linamaki when it's particularly busy because you will want to re-ride this several times. Now, where should you sit? I think for me, the front row was my favorite, which I'm usually a back row person, which I mean, I thought the back was fantastic. For this, I would actually recommend row seven before row eight, just because it's four cars per train. And this does have a little bit of an intimate shake to it. It's very similar to Velocicoaster if you've been on that one. It's not bad, like it doesn't take away from the ride experience. But for that reason, the front of each car is gonna feel a little bit better than the back of each car. So that's why I'd recommend row seven. You still get the full experience of being in the back of the train but with less shake. These seats are extremely comfortable. It's the same train setup as like Terran, or if you've ridden Pantheon, like lap bars, exactly the same. They just drop down from over your shoulder, no seat belt or anything, and then you're good to go. You're gonna start to roll out of your station, and then you hit your first launch. So it doesn't start accelerating while you're in the station, but it's a rolling launch. You haven't made it very far out before you start kicking off. And I don't have a top speed for this first launch. I know the maximum speed of Taiga overall is 66 miles per hour. That is four miles per hour slower than Velocicoaster, and seven miles per hour slower than Terran. I think this is a really great first launch. The first time I rode it, I thought it was fantastic. Like catches you off guard how punchy it is. And this first element on Taiga is so bizarre. On RCDB, they call it a zero G winder. It's listed as the same type element that you can also find on Pantheon because essentially this starts off as like an outer bank, but then it flips you into an inversion and then you go the opposite direction. It's reminiscent of the first inversion on Pantheon, but this one is just way better. It doesn't hang you for as long, but it's just so weird. I just love the feeling of hanging to the side and then falling underneath myself. But from here, this sends you into the first essentially half of Taiga, and you really get to see how close to the ground you get here. As I mentioned, this park is located on a hill. Taiga is 100% a terrain coaster. It uses this land beautifully. This bank to the right, right after that first inversion, really lets you build up some speed. It's also the first time that Taiga really starts to throw you. There's some very whippy moments on this roller coaster, most of them in the second half of the ride, but this is a good warm up. 
This half helix right up against the ground pulls some really good forces. I had a light gray out pretty much every single time I rode it. Again, just consider this the warm up of Taiga. It gets more intense later. But there's this bank turn to the right, and then you rotate to the left, going through some S bends. These are a lot of fun, and that's what leads you into your second launch and into the second half of the roller coaster. And this is a really good second launch. I love the sound of Intamin LSMs hitting. It makes the exact same sound that like Terran makes, Velocicoaster, Pantheon, Red Force, any of those roller coasters. You know what I'm talking about. It's so nice. I think I do prefer the second launch on Terran and Velocicoaster just a bit more. Maybe because both of those are themed and this one's not but it's okay at this point you rise up into the tallest moment on the ride it's 170 feet in the air but it's also not really this top hat is located on one of the higher moments of this hill and so like from the lowest parts of the hill that's probably where the 170 feet comes in but the actual drop off this top hat is only 105 feet and i'll just go out and say it i did not think that this drop was all that great it definitely felt small I think the airtime going into the top hat is way better. So for that reason, I absolutely do prefer the top hat on those other Intamin launch coasters. You just don't get much air going down this drop. It's like twisting you to the right and it's kind of shallow, but that's okay because Taiga has many other strong suits, including the stall that immediately follows. Wow, this is cool. It is so drawn out, absolutely crazy. Visually stunning too. It just transitions you into being upside down so fluidly. You're just perfectly hanging there before rotating out. And then you hit the slight bunny hill. Now overall, Taiga is not an airtime centric ride, but there are multiple good moments. This is probably the best airtime moment, mainly because this hill is so sharp. It shoots you up out of your seat. Now Taiga has many moments where it's staying low to the ground, but this inverted top hat that it does is probably the signature element on the roller coaster. Not necessarily because it's the best, but it's absolutely the most picturesque. Like I think when anyone thinks of Taiga, they think of this specific part. And this is great. I mean, it is very rare that you see an inverted top hat midway through the ride. If there's one at all, because I mean, they are rare, usually they're at the beginning. Now, RCDB calls this an Immelman. I personally did not think it felt like an Immelman at all. That's why I called it an inverted top hat, because you just hang for too long for it to feel like a traditional Immelman. It's a really great moment. I also love how you fly directly past some of that other track that you hit during the beginning of the ride. If you tilt your head up while you're upside down, you can look directly at it, and I mean, you're pretty close to it. It's cool. Now, Taiga goes all out for this next portion. You're flying upwards to the left, and you start heading towards the station. But to do that, it flips you sharply to the right. This is the most whippy moment on this ride. It tosses you like a rag doll. It is crazy. I think this might be my favorite moment, period, on Taiga. I did not see it coming at all, so the first time, I was so caught off guard. But it's a great sequence of events because you start banking upwards around that entrance. Like it's this turn right here that you walk under when you're going to ride this ride. And you start heading back down towards the ground. But to do it, as this awesome little back and forth, it sort of is shaped like it's this double down. But instead of dropping you, it's slanted where it's banking you one way, switching to the other, and then throwing you to the left. The moment I would most similarly compare it to is right after Terran's second launch, it kind of does the same thing. The twist is fun, but it's the end of the element that's the best. When it throws you there to the left to head into the next moment, that is probably the second biggest whip that you'll get on Taiga. You just have so much speed and power as you're going through this end course. The people at Intamin that came up with this layout are like geniuses for this one. They packed so much into a tight space. So following that element, you're gonna rise up into what starts to be an airtime hill, but then you bank swiftly to the left, once again, right up against the ground, and then you roll into your final inversion. And this is really fun. It's not the Mosasaurus roll, but it is great. After you exit that inversion is when you hit the break run. So overall, it is a really strong finale. It totally leaves you breathless. I mean, it's a pretty intense roller coaster. So you get off and you're like, wow, that was cool. And you know what was interesting? As you can see by the colors here on the trees, we went during the fall, which in Finland, it gets pretty chilly there. We were riding it in like 40 degree weather. And I asked some of the ride ops because I was curious, is Tiger running slower today versus how it would in the summer? Because you know, usually the hotter it is, the faster a ride will run. But that's not always the case. And it definitely wasn't the case here. We were told that it rarely gets over 70 degrees during the summers because of how north you are. And that Tiger is a pretty consistent ride in how it cycles. So we were experiencing this coaster at its full speed and power, which was honestly a relief. I was really worried that Tiger would be running like pretty slow, but not at all. All. 
I had a blast on this thing. So for Tigus, final score, I'm giving it a nine and a half out of 10. It's almost a perfect ride. I think the main thing that would have made it better is if it had a really good drop. Like I said, coming out of that top hat, I just thought was overall pretty underwhelming. Again, it makes up for it and all these other fantastic moments. But I think that's really the one thing that was like missing from this coaster. It tried to have it and it just didn't quite get there. But overall, some final thoughts comparing this to VelociCoaster. I do like this stall more than VelociCoasters, and I think Taiga is more intense. But I would obviously much rather have VelociCoaster's top hat, and I do think it has the better second launch. But you know, Taiga is also better paced in the first half, and I think overall has more whippier moments. So which one do I prefer? I'd probably give the edge to VelociCoaster primarily because of the theming and presentation. But you know, Taiga is not far behind at all, that's for sure. Regardless, though, if it isn't abundantly clear, you can't go wrong with these Intamin multi-launch coasters. I think they've totally hit a slam dunk with these things. The more of them I ride, the more I love them. So let me know down in the comments below if you've experienced Taiga at Linamaki, what you thought of it, if you agree with the points that I've brought up, and if you think there's anything I missed, post all of those thoughts down in the comments below. And stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.